Um, thank you for inviting me to this meeting. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, uh, I'm happy to be able to share with you our experiences from uh, how we used uh, uh, diabetes quality registry uh, in uh, an improvement program where the uh, quality of care really improved. And uh, um, the outcome of care I will uh, show today, the HbA1c, all the figures, all the data, is based on um, data from uh, this Swedish Pediatric Diabetes Quality Registry, Svediab Kids, uh, where all the centers, the 43, sometimes 42 centers in Sweden, pediatric diabetes centers report data to, uh, both from onset of di diabetes and further on um, uh, uh, during the disease. And all patients are uh, doing four visits to the out outpatient clinic each year, so there are data from four visits each year for each patient. And uh, uh, these improvement projects I'm going to talk about, um, this QIC, uh, Quality Improvement Pro uh, Collaboratives, uh, uh, they were um, performed by, uh, by collabor in collaboration um, by uh, the Svedia Kids and an improvement um, uh, unit in Jönköping County in Sweden, where uh, all the knowledge about improvement methods uh, were found, could be found. Uh, now I've seen that you also have adopted the IFCC uh, values for HbA1c, so I don't have to talk about this. Um, and this is uh, uh, how uh, the mean HbA1c in Sweden have uh, developed since uh, 2012, and we're very happy each time we have the opportunity to show this figure. And as you can see, uh, uh, the, the upper line the, is uh, showing the girls, values for girls, and in the middle the, it's the whole population up to uh, uh, 18 years of age, and the lower line uh, is the boys' value, values. And uh, it shows that it's possible to reach uh, a mean, national mean uh, HbA1c of 57%. And that has been the target uh, value until now in Sweden. So uh, it's, we are very content uh, with this picture. And uh, unfortunately, I haven't the uh, figures for 2017. We're just about to, to uh, do the analysis for 2017, but it wasn't ready yet. But I think it has been even somewhat lower. Uh, and could we do this without uh, an increase of severe hypos and uh, ketoacidosis? And just as uh, Justin just had shown, it is possible. And uh, we already have a low uh, proportion of patients with uh, severe hypos and uh, ketoacidosis, and it hasn't increased during these years. Uh, do we have to strive for a low HbA1c during childhood and adolescence? Uh, are we sure that we have to, to, uh, to uh, press our children and families to have a l very low HbA1c? Uh, we studied HbA1c in those 12 to 18 years of age registered uh, in Svedia kids and followed them in, uh, uh, when they were registered in the, uh, pediatric, uh, in the Diabetes Registry for Adults, NDR, National Diabetes Registry in Sweden. And uh, uh, we related complications to the metabolic control. And we found that, and we also divided them in groups. So. Uh, uh, one group was those with good metabolic control below 57 millimole as children as, and, and adolescents and uh, those with good metabolic control as adults. 
those with uh, good me metabolic as children and uh, uh, poor metabolic control as adults, those with uh, poor metabolic control as children and good metabolic control as adults and poor met those with poor metabolic control in both registries. And we found that those with poor metabolic control, both as adolescents and adults, they had a high risk for retinopathy uh, above all, and, uh, but also that those with poor metabolic control as children, but <coughs> improved their uh, metabolic control as adults, they also had a high risk for late complication. So it is very important to have a good metabolic control during childhood. <coughs> and there has also been studied, uh, studies um, uh, exploring the, if there is an increased uh, risk for death. And it has been found that there is an increased ri risk for death by, uh, uh, in people with, uh, adult people with diabetes, especially those with poor metabolic control but also among those with good metabolic control. So we uh, looked at the uh, chi children with diabetes uh, up, till, up, to uh, above, uh, uh, up to 29 years of age who were diagnosed as children or adolescents. And we found that they had a higher risk for death uh, compared to the general population. <coughs> Uh, the incidence was 0.67, uh, and uh, that is about uh, 2.4 or something higher than <coughs> the general population. And uh, among boys, uh, the, uh, there was, uh, the, the incidence was um, 0.66. I think it's about 1.7 higher uh, than the general pe population. And in girls, it was even higher. It was about four times higher uh, incidence than in the general population. And furthermore, those with poor metabolic control uh, had a higher mortality rate than those, uh, had those with poor metabolic control had more often a, um, no, no, <laughs> those with higher, uh, uh, mortality rate due to uh, those who had died due to di diabetes uh, cause, caused by diabetes, they had also a higher uh, HbA1c. Finally, I got to the, to the point. <laughs> so that is also uh, showing that it is important uh, uh, to treat uh, children with diabetes very well and to have a good quality of care. This slide you have already sh seen and uh, uh, we are very happy to see that the, the red um, staples are not very big and the pr the showing that the proportion of patients with high HbA1c is rather low uh, but you can see also that uh, th th that is the patients with the proportion of patients at each center, center with HbA1c above 70 millimole per mole. Uh, but you also see that it's, uh, it differs between clinics. So uh, uh, we still have some work to do. Uh, but. 90% of our children and adolescents do have an uh, HbA1c below 70 millimole. Uh, it hasn't always been like this, and you saw this picture before. Uh, and as Justin said, uh, it was about 40% um, that had a uh, very high HbA1c, 2000 when the registry started. and uh, 2012, it had decreased to, to um, 21%, and five years later, it is 10%. And uh, our QIC programs, the improvement programs, started in 2011, so perhaps they, uh, there was some effect of that.
here you can see the mean uh, HbA1c for each center, and uh, as Justin also said, it's the, the center mean for each center is openly presented, so you can find your own center or your neighbor uh, uh, your neighbor's mean HbA1c. And first, uh, some were very reluctant to this, but now uh, we can see uh, that the, there is a possibility to benchmark and to to ask those teams, how do you do to reach these low mean HbA1c and to share experience and knowledge between centers. Uh, and uh, is it, it is very, uh, very positive that it is a low HbA1c and also the, that we, uh, that was what we just heard, that the difference between clinics is not very high, but it is, hasn't always been this. Uh, this is the picture for the, um, the values for 2010. And you can see that there is there are uh, centers with rather low mean HbA1c, Vecchio, Uppsala. You can't read it, uh, and but there were centers with with a very high HbA1c as well. And this uh, has has been found international in uh, international studies as well, uh, like the Vidar study, for example just mentioned, uh, but we, uh, and, and uh, uh, it hasn't been due to clinical variables, but uh, 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 it has been discussed that it was <coughs> due to ineffectiveness in implementing insulin regimens and uh, target setting, uh, just as Justin said. But in Lean Shopping, we, we uh, started to think uh, uh, it, it must be something else uh, in the structure, the process uh, of care, and the attitudes, perhaps. So we uh, uh, sent out a questionnaire to team members. Uh, this is uh, some years ago. And we asked the team members about the, the most important message uh, to the patients that they conducted. They, they um, uh, said to the patients, and um, we asked questions about what do you say to your patients about uh, diet, about physical activity, about uh, uh, blood glucose targets, and so on. And uh, we found that the uh, centers with very low mean HbA1c or decreased HbA1c, uh, they, they gave a clear message. Uh, regarding, for example, how to treat severe hypo, how uh, important physical activity is, and so on. Uh, and the team members, they were very involved, engaged, and they had a positive attitude to their team and to their work and to the patients. They also had a lower HbA1c target value, um, and they also perceived that the team was very well functioning. And it was almost the opposite uh, in the teams with very high HbA1c. And uh, to that, with that background, we uh, thought that we had to do something. We had to start an intervention. So um, uh, we uh, uh, conducted a, a quality improvement collaborative, this QIC for di all diabetes teams in Sweden, aiming to improve quality of pediatric diabetes care. And we used Svelia Kids, the registry, uh, to find areas of improvement and to measure results. Uh, and we also studied, does this have any effect on the quality of care? So we invited all Swedish teams and uh, um, we have now performed uh, three QICs, and uh, uh, we are not planning any more for the moment. Uh, and uh, 36 of the 42 teams uh, have participated in these collaboratives. Uh, the number of patients at, uh, 
each team varied from 50, from very small teams to uh, very big teams. And as you can see, they, the teams came from uh, whole Sweden. So uh, in total, about 6,000 6, patients have been involved in these uh, projects, have been affected of the um, improved care, and that I think is a very, um, I'm very satisfied uh, with that figure. All, uh, there were, uh, the, uh, each team also had a coach. They had to select a coach in the team that could be a nurse, a doctor, a dietitian, or anyone in the team. And there was also um, a central coach for all the coaches, and that was me. Uh, the coaches in uh, each team, they had a day of extra training. And uh, they learned about what the program should include, and they also were introduced to the improvement methods, so they could lead and support the team members. At each of the seminars in this collaborative, we had lunch meeting with the coaches, so they could dis discuss problems and uh, learn from each other, and uh, they could uh, discuss uh, uh, what kind of improvement that that was successful and if uh, they had some problems. Uh, and between the seminars, we also had teleconference uh, giving the opportunity to discuss the same things. Um, this was a structured program uh, and this is a rather dull um, uh, flow chart of what you have to have uh, this when you're running a program. Uh, the timeline uh, you see the timeline uh, in the bottom uh, here. Uh, the, the program ran for 18 months, and the team came to these learning seminars, four learning seminars the first year. No, the first six months. Six months, first year. It differed somewhat between the programs. And uh, uh, then there were two follow-up uh, follow meetings after a year, uh, about a year. And uh, um, we had lunch meeting with the uh, coaches and telephone conferences as well. But most of the work were done at home uh, using this PDSA circle and uh, by the teams where they tested changes and uh, planning their work. And at, lunch, uh, at these uh, learning seminars, uh, they, uh, the teams learned about different methods and they had time to discuss and plan their work at home and identify problems and um, uh, so on. Different me uh, improvement methods were used. Uh, uh, for example, the clinical value compass, where the teams discussed the, the main aims in the team, where, where are we heading, uh, where, what do we want to do, uh, so that everybody had the same thoughts. And they uh, uh, made flow charts of their work, the processes to, in, uh, to, to uh, see where the problems were, where they, where they had to do some uh, intervention and, and improvement. Uh, and they uh, made, act, uh, made up uh, activity plans and followed the, this PDSA circle uh, to test the changes. And what did they, the teams do then? Uh, very many teams, they updated their guidelines and th they discussed uh, how they worked and what they said. The, the advice they gave to the patients, and they, uh, um, all team members uh, came to the same uh, uh, decision, and they they, uh, it, they could give a common message to the patients and the family, and that's very important. Um, many teams 
uh, work with patients with very high HbA1c and um, implemented more frequent clinical visits for those patients. Some uh, uh, or many patients educated the staff at the war wards um, aiming to improve the, uh, the care at onset. Carbohydrate counting was in introduced in Sweden during this period, and I think that uh, this um, QIC facilitated the introduction of carbohydrate counting. Uh, uh, some uh, looked over the processes of care at the outpatient cl clinic and improved or changed that. Updated local guidelines and policies for newly diagnosed patients were uh, also done and um, for pump users as well. So this is some of the things that the team did. And did it have any effect? Uh, this is the <coughs> mean HbA1c in um, uh, Sweden. Uh, since the uh, register started, and, and you see, you can see that the mean, it has improved since uh, year 2000, and um, you can see the, uh, that the QIC, uh, the black line, um, has uh, a very good improvement of the HbA1c, and um, has uh, the lowest. Um, HbA1c compared to uh, the, the teams that uh, uh, participated in IQ, the QIC, the second QIC. But you can also see that the non-participating centers also had this large improvement. And that is a positive effect. It's, it's a spill, spillover effect that you can see sometimes. And uh, I think it's well. We or we think it's due to uh, the, uh, that uh, Sweden is rather small, only 43 teams. We meet at uh, uh, such meetings as this one, and we talk a lot. Perhaps you do the same things, and we are uh, very willing to share experience and documents. And uh, uh, so that's. I think that we think that is what has happened. Um, but we think uh, that this uh, QIC project have had, has had an impact on the mean HbA1c in Sweden. So I hope it will uh, here as well. And what happened with the HbA1c <laughs> during the project time? Uh, and uh, this, is, uh, this shows that uh, the mean HbA1c uh, among the teams in uh, IQ1, the first um, program, uh, they reached the lowest HbA1c compared to uh, the second program and compared to the non-participating um, centers. Perhaps the, the teams that uh, uh, participated in the first program were the most motivated teams uh, and uh, the most uh, engaged, involved team members. We don't know. So uh, what are the success factors to, um, to reach a low HbA1c value? Uh, the first thing that you have to do is a build, to build a team to, uh, to think of who is in the team so that you really know uh, uh, who the team members are. And we also think that giving the same message to families and children and, and adolescents is a very important uh, thing. And also this uh, clear goal setting and to, to tell the patients about the glucose target value and the HbA1c target value is also very important, and that all team members <coughs> have the same message about that. And in uh, pediatric diabetes care, we have a long tradition of person and or family-centered care, and we think that this is also very important to involve the whole family and the parents, of course. 
Um, good knowledge about new technologies such as pumps and CGM is very important. We can, we can treat the, uh, the patients with pumps, but we have to be very uh, good in uh, using them and to, to educate the patients. So the healthcare, the, uh, the staff has to be, have to, to know a lot about the new technologies. And uh, also this follow-up of results is very important. And in uh, Svedia Kids, it's very easy to follow up your own results. You can get data easily. Uh, and that is one su uh, factor for this success, I think. Uh, regarding new technologies, um, <coughs> this is uh, the proportion of patients treated with insulin pump at the different clinics. And uh, about 61% in Sweden of the, uh, in, of the patients, children and adolescents, are treated with pump, insulin pump. But you can see it differs a lot between clinics. Um, and uh, if you look uh, on centers with high or low mean uh, HbA1c, you can see that uh, the centers with the lowest mean HbA1c can be found among these, uh, those clinics with a high proportion on pumps or with a low proportion of pumps. Uh, and uh, centers with highest mean HbA1c, that is the same, just as Justin uh, showed. So we can't find a relation uh, between pump, the use of pumps and mean HbA1c. We also have asked the uh, coaches uh, about their experiences in focus groups. We have interviewed them in focus <coughs> groups and uh, uh, asked them what facilitated the improvement work. And they thought that um, uh, the support for the work at home at the clinic is very important to have the management support. And this was also uh, what we told the, the team when the uh, QIC project started, that they had to have the management support, and that is very important as well. And you uh, also, they, the coaches, they described that uh, it was important to have an acceptance for that this work took some extra time they had to, uh, had to have extra time for for uh, meetings and so on that that was important uh, too uh, they did also describe the commitment in the team that it was important that everyone participated and came to the meeting and ad attended the meeting <coughs> and um, gave pri priority to these meetings they also described that it was important to have a quality registry uh, to follow up results and to use uh, statistics and uh, to support uh, the, the changes they, that they had to make. Um, about having a coach uh, during this project, they said that uh, they learned from each other, the coaches, at our meetings and telephone conferences, and uh, that a coach keep the work together, and they they can uh, uh, drive the, the work and push it for, forward. So I think this was a, a, also a factor for success that there the was a coach in each team. Uh, but there were some limitations, uh, uh, of course. Uh, of course, there were some some people that uh, wasn't as committed to the work as <coughs> others and wasn't as positive as others to, to changes. Uh, and uh, it was uh, a problem when sta some of the staff left, if a nurse um, moved and uh, left the team, it was a problem. And also if there was a lack of cooperation within the team. So the, of course there were problems, uh, but that could be discussed uh, at the telephone conference and, and the lunch meetings. So we have learned that it is very important to have extra time for, tea, for your team meetings. 
and to get all team members invo involved in the work and to dare to try changes and this uh, this QIC they have given te the teams new possibilities to to change their work and also uh, that uh, changes takes time and you have to analyze the team's activities and do these flow charts inventing your problems and so uh, and uh, to start with, not everybody could uh, get data from the registry, and they had to learn this. And this is very important that you that you really know how to to take out the, your own data. And also, this common message, common guide guidelines that uh, for and all team members saying the same things to patients. And some uh, teams also involved the family and uh, in the uh, guidelines in, in, um, in the care and uh, they had them sometimes as a, uh, a member in a working group and, and, and got support and advice from the patients and their families. Yes, you have seen this picture. And this is, um, uh, it, of course, it's not only these QIC programs that have, uh, are responsible for this uh, improved care. There are other things that have, uh, has contributed to this low HbA1c in Sweden. Um, uh, for example, we have uh, got new guidelines for diabetes self-care in preschool and school that has to be followed uh, by the staff in the school and it uh, uh, facilitates the communication between parents and school and ha we think that this has have, uh, this have had a uh, positive effect for the communication between par families and school. We have uh, introduced carb counting in Sweden as I said but the, I, we think also that the QIC has, uh, project uh, has uh, facilitated this introduction of carb, count, carb counting. Um, just like uh, continuous uh, glucose monitoring, CGM or FGM, FGM also has contributed to this lowering of HbA1c. But it has also been facilitated by, by the QIC projects. So how, what should you do in your teams to, to improve quality of care? First, or to, or to attend uh, such a project like Q QIC, first of all, you have to get the management's approval. And you have to have more time for the meetings and discussions. This is like a recipe. Uh, you have to build and find a team and we have to think of uh, who should be our coach. Who is the best uh, to, to lead us through this work? And the ta define a target for HbA1c, for uh, blood glucose levels. And you have to start to invent uh, your problems. And uh, you have to decide which variables uh, do you want to follow in your team and how can you get them from the national registry. Um, and then you have to start test the changes and follow the results, report to the man management and implement the positive uh, changes. Uh, we had the, the target for HbA1c, it was set to 50 Seven, uh, yes, 57, although most of the team had their own uh, target value of 52 during this pr project. But now the national target in Sweden for HbA1c since uh, this autumn is 48. So perhaps we have to start new QIC projects again to reach this. So, thank you for listening.